I did. I did another. I did a load of cocaine to Australia, the biggest ever in the history of Australia. I got caught with four hundred million dollars worth down there. Tell me, talk to me, tell me about this trip from, from, the Caribbean where they loaded up your ship to Australia. What right. was that like? <clears throat> well, that was that was interesting. I uh, I left home in Louisiana. I never <clears throat> never run the ship before, and I mean it was a, a learning curve for me. And somebody left the uh, water on down in the, one of the bathrooms. We only had 600 gallons of fresh water because we'd change it all to fuel. So we ran out of water before we got to Key West. So I had to go into Key West and get water. And then I took off and went across the uh, tongue of the ocean through the Bahamas. And I went to um, Senegal. What's the islands off of the, of the anyhow, some islands 600 miles off of Senegal. And... Uh, I can't think of the name of them right now. But anyhow, I stayed there a week. The Colombians told me they'd load me there. Like uh, Barbados? No, no. This is a, this is a, Canary. what? Canary. Canary? No, south of the Canary is about a thousand miles. I can't think of it. I know it as good as my own name. I know the Praia is the name of the town. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's anyhow, it's Senegal. Okay. And uh, so I stayed there, and then the Colombians said no come back towards Columbia a thousand miles. I, what? Because I just got enough money, just um, fuel just barely to make it to Australia. So I have to go back a thousand miles and then they're not there and I have to go three or four days cruising around up and down below the radar mm -hmm. or the satellites and finally they show up and throw the stuff on. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I go down and I go uh, follow the center of the Atlantic Ocean down because the current goes counterclockwise in the southern oceans, clockwise in the northern oceans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went far south of Cape Town and went down um, went down about 50 degrees in the great southern ocean near Antarctica. And I came with it. And uh, I woke up one morning and the waves was, I fished in Alaska, you remember? And yeah. These waves was just in, un, indescribably tall. It wasn't rough, but they were just mountains. Giant swells. Just swells, and they were sharp. I mean, almost straight up and down. And the boat would come, and it would just come up, and it would stop and go, and then the propellers would come out of the water, and there'd and be a curl on the surf down it? And then surf down it, and the nose would stick in the ground, in the water, oh, it'd come back over. Well, it, I was real uncomfortable. I, so I was supposed to go under towards Melbourne, so I, I got out of it, and I turned north, so north to get out of that sharp latitude, and I went and unloaded, uh, <coughs> I went lo unloaded up about the middle of the West Australian coast in a real desert area and was arrested there. But I, uh, I have visions. And two weeks before I was arrested, I had a crystal clear vision of me being arrested and how it was and my feelings. I, uh, I was, they was on my back with hands and putting the handcuffs on me. And I was in the sand with the, down there and I was crying and I was just laying, poor, poor, poor Mari. I knew our life was over together. And it happened exactly like I saw it in that vision. So I turned my ship from and went 500 miles from where I went boat to go. But the snitch was waiting on me, so I didn't have any choice. Who was the snitch? <clears throat> a guy named Eduardo, the, uh, the owner's brother, uh, friend, and he had been working with them from the day one. So they knew all we were coming from before we left. God, so your vision of this, all this happening and exactly everything falling apart like came, came to fruition. Yes. So what happened after they arrested you? Oh, they put us in a bulletproof van, one of those things like armored trucks, and took us to prison. Wow. And how many? And you ended up obviously so you didn't escape that prison, right? You stayed in Australia. No, I while. didn't. I uh, I could have one time, and Mari <clears throat> wouldn't send the little money he needed to have some help. Mari was time. pissed at you. She ain't gonna help me get out. Were you <laughs> Were you guys in communication at all? Did you guys communicate every, back and forth every day? Australia prisons are so much nicer than American prisons. Really? Yeah. Oh, they give you a long time, and it's hard, but they treat you good. The food's good. The officers seem to go to school to have a little more intelligence than just the scumbags that they have. The here. officers are way different in oh, here. Oh yeah, and I feel like I've always I've always thought <clears throat> with all the people that I've talked to that have been in, in and out of prison, especially on this podcast, is that the the people that end up in the United States that end up being prison guards yeah. are like the people who couldn't even make it as cops. They couldn't even make it as. as 
security guards. They are some right. of the lowest life scum on the face of the earth. And it seems like the, the people that are the security guards or prison guards in this country, they're they're not people that are there because that's what they wanted to be. It's because they failed at something else and they just they and, got a job and they got a badge and they got authority and they right. just strut. Right. Like you woke up well, you get talked ugly too. They kill people in there. Mm -hmm. They hurt you. And the prison guards in Australia, uh, was it like they were they were paid better? They were educated more? They actually... They All were, of that. Was there like more of like a, a sense of like a mission to get something done there? Like we got to... Oh, it wasn't good, but it was just not... It wasn't such hatred as these fools here have for you. It just didn't really? have that ring for it. Hmm. Oh, you had some nasty ones once <clears throat> in a while. But right. They'd be like one out of 20 or 30 might be nasty. Mm. Okay. But here... You get every other one that's nasty. Right. A good 50% of them. There's some nice ones here, too. But it's rare. So how many years did you stay in that prison in Australia? 18 years. 18 years. Mm -hmm. And it was the most the maximum security prison that there is in that country, it's right? The most, most secure prison in the Southern Hemisphere. The most secure prison in the Southern Hemisphere. That's what it's known as, yes. Wow. And what was your experience like there for 18 years? Uh, well, when I first went in, I'd, I'd been in a week or two, and when they got my paperwork that I escaped from five different prisons, <laughs> they came and arrested me right where I was having supper. And they took me to, to that prison. I was in the Hakia prison. They took me to uh, Casarina prison, and they put me in a shoe. Mm -hmm. And I was in there for over a year. And uh and that's that, a, the shoe is basically just an isolated box just by yourself. Well, there was five of us in this Okay. One. And it was, uh, it had room for 12 prisoners in there. And they had, uh, it was like, kind of like the Silence of the Lambs. That was a big cage. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, six guards on the other side looking at you through a one-way mirror. Mm. And they come in the morning with all of them had uh, big clubs. And they opened the door. And they brought food in. We cooked it ourselves. And then they come in at 6 o'clock and locked our doors. And that was it. That's all we had in them. You had a little, you could talk to them through a, through a speaker, mm -hmm. and uh, that was all. It, was, it wasn't bad, but it was just like, how long am I going to be in here? And that's when I had the, uh, I wondered, okay, I've got 25 years in America, and I've escaped from the German prison. I've done this, got lifed here. I might never see my children or my grandchildren. They might ever know me. I believe I'll write about when I, my grandma bought me the little horse. And they had a computer room in there. You, so you were ha you were there for life. You, yeah, you thought life. you were there for life. I, I was hoping I'd get out. I certainly right. behaved myself. I had to go 18 years before I could ask for parole. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I'd write it down. Okay, I, when I got the Mexican Pinto, I'm going to write that story tomorrow. So they had the little computer room there, and uh, I didn't know how to turn the thing on. And it had a thing called uh, paintbrush. It didn't have a program on it. So I could type. So I could type one line. And then the next day, I think about when my daddy was robbed in Chattanooga, and I'd write that little story. And then I got where I'd write two or three of them a day. And in the end of about three or four months, I had over a million words written in one line. Wow. So when I got out of the shoe, they gave it to me on, on disc, and I went and uh, I got out, and they, they let me buy a computer. They let, pe let you buy a computer. Oh, really? Time. Yeah. It wasn't hooked up to anything, but you could do all the you could put a lot of programs on it, like encyclopedias and like a laptop or something. It was or? A, it, no, it was a full-on computer. And where did you keep it? Time. In your in your cell. You had really? A, had a cell with a door and a lock to it, and yeah. It oh was, wow, it was pretty nice. Ain't no lie about it. Now compared to America, it's quiet and no internet though. No. Okay. Nothing like that. <clears throat> but you had telephones and it wasn't expensive. I called Mari every day for twenty minutes. So anyway, I took that thing out and it took me. Two years to straighten out what all I had written and saw what it was all different colors where I'd misspelled and just right. I just put what my thoughts were. So you went through and edited it, and revised well, it. And I had to write it really because yeah. I was just writing my thoughts as fast as I could right. just, just put them. So that's how I did it. So I, I took it out and I, I got uh, uh, I, I, I took two thirds of it out. So there's only 520 pages. Mm -hmm. They'd have been 1500 pages if I'd put it all in there. 